Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a slimline card featuring a bunch of coloring using Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers and stamps and dies from Waffle Flower Crafts. Here is a look at the card we'll be making today. You can see all those little terrariums and vases all lined up on my card and let's get started. So to start out, I've got all of my images stamped out just using Gina K Black Amalgam Ink which is um, waterproof so you can use it with zig clean color real brush markers and as you can see i'm getting them out here is a look at my swatch charts i have this swatched out this is another waffle flower stamp and just all my favorite combos there so i can refer to it and i refer to it throughout the video I've also off to the side got my slimline card base, which is eight and a half wide by three and a half tall. So now I'm starting my coloring. I am going to show all of the coloring in this video. I'm not going to say what the color combos are um, just because I swap out and use different ones at different times. So it's kind of a lot to keep track of, but um, I wanted to be able to show you all of the coloring that I do. All of what I do is either a two color blend with a darker and a lighter tone marker, or I drag out the color with a water brush, but I really only do that um, to fill the vases and the terrariums with a little bit of water at the bottom, which I'll show you at the very end. I love using these markers next to Copic markers. They are my favorite coloring medium. I think that they blend out really great. The colors blend together well. They are really good quality. The bristles are short enough that I get good control, which for me is really important. I've tried other uh, brush tip markers that have like a real bristle brush like these do not just kind of like a foam brush tip. And the bristle brush is on these is, is short enough that I get good control because sometimes they're just way, way too long. I love this stamp set. When I got it in the mail, I just knew that I had to do a slimline card and line up all of um, the little vases and terrariums, I actually end up coloring too many. Um, I could have probably put a few more on the card, but I like the look of odd numbers. So there's five on the finished card. But I just took the extras and made another card with them, which is great. You've already, I feel like if you've already got all, out all of the things you need for coloring and you're already in that mindset, keep coloring do a couple extras and make a second or a third card even. I just feel like that's a really easy way to kind of get ahead on card making. One of the things I love so much about this stamp set are all of the little extras. So the little birds and the butterflies, you can have those so that they're flying around the scene or so that they are resting on the vases or on the ground next to the vases which is what I do. This stamp and die set is called Jars of Happiness, which I just love um, because flowers out for me on my calendar def or on my count on my counter, excuse me, definitely bring me happiness. And then there is a coordinating stamp set with just sentiments, which is called Jars Sentiments. I will have everything linked down below in the description box on this, by the way. I, I always do that for all my videos and, and have all of the links there. But all of the sentiments on that stamp set are so varied that you just get so many different options that go with these cute little jars. Really all occasion, sympathy, birthday, well wishes, many, many, many different um, cards that you can make. I am just coloring these in and no Right, for no rhyme or reason. I'm not doing rainbow. I'm just looking at the flower and thinking what color I think it might be. And that's how I am coloring it. Some of these do have um, like grass in the water or leaves in the water. 
So I'm just making sure to color those. And then once I have out a set of markers, I color another thing. So for example, I colored those flowers orange and yellow, and I knew I wanted one of the butterflies to look like a monarch butterfly. So while I had those out, I just went ahead and colored that butterfly as well. I really enjoy watching other people color, so I'm leaving in all of my coloring. Um, I feel like that's something I love, like, especially about, you know, Christina Warner's videos and Kelly Latavola's videos, that they do so much coloring, and I just find it so inspiring and also so soothing. Um, I don't know if anybody took the online card classes class with Kathy Rakuzin, the uh, coloring road trip for the online car class. Um, but I found it very inspiring and really look forward to putting those techniques that she talks about into practice. One day I hope to go to one of her classes. Um, sadly though, I think she really only goes to stamp and die manufacturers like companies and nobody that I know of is located near me. Um, this past fall, my mom and I actually went to a class that Jen Shirkus did. And for those of you that don't know, I live in North Texas in Fort Worth, and she was doing a class in, class in Nash, which is on the Texarkana border. And so my mom and I spent six hours in the car one day, three hours there and three hours back to go to her class. And it was so much fun. So I think even if it, there was one close within semi-driving distance, I would certainly go um, if to Kathy's class like I did to Jen's just because I think it's so much fun to get to meet people in person and, and meet other people who craft in real life because I, you know, so much of what I do is sharing on the internet with, you know, I don't necessarily get to meet people in real life. So it was just a nice chance to get to meet people. I've just got a few things left to color and then we can get on to building out this card. By the way, I don't know if I already said this, everything is sped up um, two times. I can't color this quickly. If I could color this quickly, I would probably make a lot more cards. So just going in, coloring those last few images. And then here is where I am going to use the water brush um, along with the markers. So by the way, I never mentioned this. I am coloring on Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper, which I think is the best for Zig markers because the paper is so smooth it allows the markers to blend. I have blended on Nina in the past, but um, definitely think this is the way to go. Oh, one more coloring before I forgot. There were, there were leaves in that um, face and I didn't color them. So basically on the bottom of all of these faces, you can see the back line. And so I color all of that solid and then color a little bit over um, the line into the top of the vase and then just pull up the color with a water brush. This paper... It's not like watercolor paper where, you know, it's meant to take on water. This paper is not necessarily meant to do that. And so you have to be kind of careful about the amount of water that you put on before the paper starts pilling. But just this little amount is totally fine. I also think that you could definitely leave these jars empty and not put any um, water in the jars. Totally personal preference. Uh, I think that's what makes card making so fun sometimes is to see the different ways that people color in images. Because the way that I see it might not be the way that you see it. And so it just makes it for a unique, you know, it makes everybody's cards different in the end. And I just think that's so much fun. On these um, bases with leaves in them, I'm trying my hardest not to contaminate, um, but I do contaminate a little bit on that bottom one, but you'll see in the final card on how I fix that and cover it up a little bit. I feel like there are always ways to cover up our mistakes. <laughs> 
Okay, moving on. Now that the coloring is done, I am just getting a feel for how I want these laid out. I've done all my die cutting off screen. And here you can see I'm going to have a few extra, a few extra of the little jars. Wasn't sure I was going to fit those in or which ones I wanted. And then I've got the little birds and the butterflies cut out too. I'm just trying to determine where I want to place those. It's about now that I start thinking to myself that I wish that the images had something to ground them on the back and, you know, that I wish there was just a little something extra. So in a second, I'll start doing a little bit of ink blending on the background. When I'm placing the little butterflies and the birds, I am just trying to make sure every little pot, vase, terrarium, whatever you want to call it, has a buddy. So, um, you know, one of them already has a butterfly built in, so they don't need anything. But the other ones, I'm just trying to make sure everybody, like I said, has either a little bird or a butterfly friend. Now I am just going to get out that sentiment stamp set. And like I said, there are so many good sentiments in here. Thank you. You know, love you. Well wishes. Good. A lot of really good friendship sentiments about how a friend is a blessing to you and things like that. I am going ahead and choosing one that says where flowers bloom. So does hope which I think is really lovely. As I mentioned before, I now have out my no, new piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth and some waffle flower ink. And I am just going ahead and creating a little bit of a background for these little pots and terrariums to sit on and kind of ground them, give the card a little bit more interest and depth. As much as I love a clean and simple card, Sometimes it just needs a little bit something extra. So um, I just did a little bit of very, very light ink blending with a uh, blender brush. I feel like that gives the lightest result for me is, is the using a blender brush. Now moving on, I'm using foam tape to adhere all of these images down. So just taking various little pieces and strips of foam tape, I cut this up in a million little pieces so that it fits the back of these. I'll get foam tape on all of these and adhere them all down. Just adding a little bit of dimension. You surely could glue these down flat, but I really love foam tape. More foam tape on everything is kind of my motto. Now that all of those are adhered down, I am just going to stamp out my sentiment. And I am going to use the same ink color I used to do the blending. Just stamping that down. Sorry, I don't realize I'm out of frame. And I end up stamping it down three times to get the color really vibrant on there. So there you can see it a little bit better. And then one last time, making sure I get it really nice and good. And then I will go ahead and take this out of my Misty, clean up that stamp, and then we will move on to doing the final touches of this card. So I've got that panel there. I still have not attached it to my card base. So I am going to go ahead and do that, kind of move aside all of my little finishing touches, the birds and the butterflies. And just gonna go ahead and adhere this down. This is just using some um, dot runner, nothing fancy. I often like to stand up my card panel on my base to make sure everything is straight and on correctly. And now I've got that done. You definitely could leave it here. You don't have to add 
all of the little extras, but I think that they add a lot of fun. So here is where I am going to kind of correct that little mistake where there's a little bit of green in the water from where the leaves are and where my water brush picked up. That's where I put my little butterfly friend and it covers it right up and no one will ever know. I also I talk about this a lot, but I just feel like they shouldn't look perfect. Handmade cards shouldn't look perfect. They should make look make them look like you made them. So every once in a while, a little blemish here or there really doesn't bother me because then the person knows that it's authentic. Adding on these last little touches. That's just, I'm just using some liquid glue for this just because these images are so tiny. So that little butterfly will go there. And that is the card for today. I hope that you enjoyed watching me color ramble on about nothing. Um, one of these days I'll get better at voiceovers. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you're enjoying the latest release from Waffle Flower. And I will catch you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more from me and watch another video from me. I'll talk to you later. Bye.